In the next unit, we're going to be talking a lot about numbers, so we're really going to have to know our certainty and our uncertainty in our values. So we're going to be learning a lot about significant digits. So we're going to start with a short note on math and measurement skills. So a measurement requires a tool. So you need a tool. This could be a balance for a mass. It could be a ruler for a distance or length. It could be a graduated cylinder for volume. But all of these allow you to measure something. The numbers that you get off of a measurement all have a degree of uncertainty with them. The last number is always an uncertain number or is an estimate. So the, your last number is an estimate. So if we look at the picture on the right, you can see that there's a ruler and the top of the, the top side of the ruler it's a little hard to see on this picture. You can see it better on yours. It has a piece of white tape. So take a look at that. And I want you to record in the box your measurement that you think it is. So in centimeters, what do you think your the measurement is for your piece of tape on your diagram? Okay, so this is in centimeters, there's five centimeters, there's six centimeters, but you can tell that each centimeter is divided up into tenths, so you can actually record millimeters, so you can read this ruler with a degree of accuracy to at least a tenth of a centimeter or a millimeter. What's uncertain is the number that comes after it. So your uncertain number is not a number you can read based on how your device is sectioned up but it's rather where it falls between the divisions. So we have to estimate, if you say it's 5.4, is it 5.40, 5.45, 5.48? So we all will read a little bit differently. Some people will say this is more like 5.35 or 3.8. But this last number, whatever we pick, are the uncertain numbers. So your last digit is your estimated digits uncertain. Scientists work with some very large and some very small numbers. So we need to have a simpler way to write these numbers. So we use scientific notation. If it's in the long form, it's called standard notation. So 1500 would be standard notation. To put something in scientific notation, you have a number represented by A, and you have times 10 to the exponent n. The times 10 portion means you're moving your decimal place and the n tells you how many places you're moving it. So, 1500. To write this in scientific notation, you can only have one number before the decimal place. So that one number here would be 1. So you put 1.5 times 10, 
and then the number, the exponent, n, depends on how many places you moved. So decimal place is there, one, two, three. So we would move it three spots. So it's 1.3, sorry, 1.5 times 10 to the 3. For small numbers, you end up moving the decimal place to the right. So here, the number that's going to be before the decimal is going to be this 5. So we're going to move it two spots. So this, in scientific notation, is 5.05 .05 times 10. So we moved it two spots. Because it's a small number, less than 1, it's negative. So if you are a large number, your exponent is positive. If you are a small number, less than 1, your exponent is negative. And that just tells you the direction you moved your decimal place. So if you're a large number, it moves to the left. And if you're a small number, it moves to the right. So the exponent tells you how many spots you moved. The sign tells you if it's a big number or a small number. Okay, so we've all rounded numbers before. So if we look at this example, 2.778. So we want to round to the nearest tenth. So that's your first decimal place. When you round a number, you look to the digit after that number. And that will tell you what to do to the number that you're keeping. So we're going to round to the tenth place. So we've got to look at the hundredth place. If that number is greater than five, we round the previous number up. So seven, this seven number that we're looking at, is greater than five. So we round up our answer to 2.8. And the reason we're doing it to the tenths is just because the question told us to. B. So this time the question says round it to the nearest tenths. So the number that we're examining we have to look at is the 2. Because that number is less than 5, we leave the previous number as it is. So you're rounding down. So the nearest tenth to 12 is 10. So we round the number down. If the number was 1 8, 0.778. If it was 18.778 and we were rounding to the tenths, we'd have to look at that because it's greater than 5. Our answer would be rounded up, so then it would be 20. All right, C, 3,523.4. So round to the nearest thousands. So here's our thousands. Because the number that we have to look at is 5, and if it's 5 or greater we round up, our answer here is 4,000. 4,000. Now, this 0 in the 10 and these three zeros are called placeholders because they keep that four in the proper column, keeps it in the thousands. We don't just write four, three, 
rounds to four because I think you, if you got a $3,500 paycheck, would want $3,500 or 4000 You wouldn't want four. So those zeros are important. They're placeholders. Okay, significant digits. Stop groaning. They're in physics and in chemistry. All right, so non-zero digits. is a term that means numbers one through nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. They are all non-zero digits. So the rule is you always begin with the first non-zero digit from the left and count to the right. So we're gonna use the following guidelines. All and this is on your sheet, all non-zero numbers are significant. So they all count. Trailing zeros. A trailing zero is zeros at the end of a number. Um, on the previous question, we had 1,500. This has two trailing zeros. We had oh, no other ones. Uh, if we changed this example to have a zero after that second five, it would have one trailing zero. So the ze trailing zeros are always on the ones to the right. So trailing zeros that are after the decimal, so they're after a non-zero number and they're after the, the decimal, are significant. So don't confuse trailing zeros with these zeros. These are not trailing, they're leading. So these are leading zeros up front before the first non-zero number. Zeros between other significant digits are significant. Leading zeros or placeholders. So they aren't necessarily the same thing. A leading zero could come after a decimal place but before the first number. But these trailing zeros here, because there's no decimal place, they're also placeholders. They keep the one and the five in the proper column. So leading zeros or placeholders are not significant. They're important, but we don't count them as significant digits. So they're not significant. To recap, numbers between one and nine including one and nine, are significant. Trailing zeros after the decimal, at the very right, after a decimal, are significant. Zeros between other non-zero numbers are significant, but leading zeros for decimal places or placeholders are not significant. Now some numbers, some values actually have an infinite 
number of significant digits. An infinite number of significant digits occur when you're counting something like the number of male students in the classroom. There's an exact number of male students. So if you're counting something, be it students, be it eggs, there's an infinite number of significant digits. So that value will not come into play when you're rounding answers. What also has an infinite number are um, known values or conversion values, like there's 1,000 grams in one kilogram. Both of these numbers are considered accurate and therefore have an infinite number of significant digits. So whenever you use conversions, we're going to say they have an infinite number of significant digits. Okay, so let's take a look at these measurements or values and let's figure out what sig what number of significant digits they have. So the first one, let's take a look at this one. 3.307.0, so 307.0 centimeters. So this one actually has four significant digits it's got four significant digits because this final zero at the end here is after a non-zero number and the decimal place 61 meters per second this one's pretty straightforward. It's got two, the six and the one. If we look at the next number, 0 0.03, it actually has only one significant digit, and that's this three here. These zeros are just placeholders. They are leading zeros, so they don't count because they're not after the three. So, this one only has one significant digit. Next example, 0 0.5060 0 kilograms. This number has four significant digits because all of them occur after the decimal. And the zero, one zero is between two non-zeros, the five and the six, and the other one is a trailing zero after the decimal after a non-zero number. So this one has four. 3.0 times 10 to the 8, so the speed of light. This has two significant digits. This, this zero, this zero here, is after a non-zero number and after the decimal. 2500 seconds. This has actually two significant digits. Two significant digits. The reason being there's no decimal here, so these zeros are just placeholders. They're keeping the two and the five in the proper columns. So if you didn't have those zeros, it would just be 25 seconds. So it's 2,500 seconds, but there's no decimal. So those two zeros at the end are placeholders. And we've got 100 people. So the answer is no. Or three, it's infinite because this is a count. There's an infinite number of significant digits because 100 people were counted, not measured. Okay, so using significant digits. For multiplic 
applying numbers and dividing numbers. The rules are the same. So for multiplication and division, you have to look at the values you're given in your question. The one with the least number of significant digits tells you how many significant digits you can have in your final answer. So, the least number of significant digits in original data determines how many you can have in your answer. So, example number one. 5.72 centimeters times 3.1 centimeters times 8.333 centimeters. So this has three significant digits, this has two, and this has four. So you do your multiplication and when you get to your final answer, you can only have two significant digits in your answer because your values that you started with had a number with only two significant digits. So, 147.76 yada yada yada. You have to round this to only two significant digits. So these two are going to be your significant digits. So you have to look at the seven. That's the first number to be dropped. How is that going to affect our four? So it's higher than five. The number to be dropped is higher than five. So you have to round up. So our answer is going to be either a hundred and fifty because this isn't 14.7, it's 147, but you can't have three numbers in your answer, only two. So we've got 150 or 1.5 times 10 to the 2, because we've moved our decimal two spots to the left. This zero is just a placeholder. There's no decimal place shown. All right, the next example is a little trickier. You have to know how to use your calculator. You're given two numbers in scientific notation. And I want you to pay attention. So listen up. Four. 0.73 times 10 to the 5. When you put this in your calculator, you're not multiplying times 10 to the exponent 5. You will get the wrong answer. What this means is, you, this is in scientific notation. So depending on your calculator, you either use an EXP button or an EE button. Or some of you even have a times 10 to the x button. So look at your calculator. So this is going to be point times 5.8 times 10 to the 7. Okay, so looking at calculators. Some of you have Texas Instrument calculators. So you're going to be looking for this button right here. The EE. -E. Your EE -E button means your EE -E button means times ten to the ten. So you would have to push second EE -E, and then five. So to put four point seven three times ten to the five in your calculator. You put 4.73, second function, x to the minus 1, so that it comes up as e, e, 
and then you're going to put in 5. So your calculator reads it as 4.73 times 10 to the 5. Some of you have sharp calculators that look like this. You've got an EXP button right here. So you type in 4.73, then you push your EXP button, and then you push 5. And that is telling your calculator 4.73 times 10 to the 5. Some of you have Casio calculators, and down here is your EXP button. So 4.73 times 10 to the 5 would be 4.73 EXP button, and then 5. Do not, I repeat, type in 4.73, then push times, then push your 10 to the X button. Because you're saying, please multiply by this number. Don't do it. So when you multiply these two numbers, you should get 2.7434 times 10 to the 13. Now, going back to our original numbers, this has three significant digits. This has two significant digits, so our final answer can only have two. There's the two. So our final answer is 2.7 times 10 to the 13. Adding and subtracting, we're looking at the number of decimal places, not significant digits, but the answer will be rounded to the same number of decimal places as your value with the fewest number of decimal places. So example number one, we've got 7.49 plus 10.582 plus 15.72384. This number has two decimal places, the 4 and the 9. This one has 3, the 5, the 8, and the 2. And this number has five decimal places, 72384. So that's a way more accurate number than our 4, 9. So your final answer cannot be more accurate than your least accurate number. So when we add these numbers up, it comes 33.79589, but we can only have two decimal places, so we're looking at these two. So the number to be dropped is a 5, so that rounds these numbers up. So our final answer is 33.80. Okay, example number 2. Eleven point seven plus 3.29 plus 0 0.542. This number has one decimal place, the 7. This has 2 the 2, 9, and this has 3, the 5, the 4, and the 2. So when we add these numbers up, it's 15.532. But that number is more accurate than our least accurate number. So we can only have one decimal place. So we leave it there. Look at the number to be dropped. And it's a 3, so we're just going to leave our number alone. Our final answer is 15.5.
I'll go through the conversions tomorrow, and we're going to get into dimensional analysis soon, but work on the worksheet, please.